and we now have Starship uh, re-entering uh, the Earth atmosphere. It is now subsonic. Means uh, that means that it, we're, we're possibly going to see a pretty decent splashdown uh, in the Indian Ocean. Doesn't look like it's going to do one of those. Um, catastrophic uh, disintegrations in the atmosphere because we are way past that. It is coming down somewhat gently to Earth, but you see it somewhat in tatters good. as well Got there. The pressures in our nose cone we're monitoring the live stream. That's the voice of some of the, uh, um, the, the analysts over at... 30 seconds. Yeah, we're we're 30 seconds flip. away, according so to uh, SpaceX. Right now, and and we're still flip. joined by uh, Olivier Dweck. He is first. monitoring this with us. Uh, Olivier, as we watch this, let's just take this live stream here and see see what they say, and then uh, we'll talk, hopefully, after Splashdown here. Here we go. Sounds great. Starship landing burn start up. And it's daytime. Seeing three engines. <laughs> There's our flip. <laughs> There's a buoy. Wow. There's a splashdown. <laughs> hey. Wow, a little bit of a fireworks show right there at the end. But uh, Olivier, well, I mean, splashdown right there, controlled all the way down. And, and this thing, the, the back of it, I mean, you saw in the video, like, it was in tatters. So the fact that they were able to stress that, the fact that you saw some of the skirt was burned up, that some of the fins looked like they were damaged, and they still were able to keep the trajectory uh, relatively stable for it to come down before touching the water and then blowing up. <laughs> what does that tell you? Uh, well, another, a couple other things to observe here beside the rocket itself, the Starship itself. First of all, it's daytime, right? Um, mm -hmm. So it flew, it flew for about an hour, and so it's daytime on the other side of the Earth, and that this sort of Earth-to-Earth -Earth flights, you can see it's possible. But notice that the view that we're seeing now is not taken from the rocket itself, right? Because most of the mm -hmm. views that we saw were from cameras on the rocket itself transmitted to Starlink. We're seeing the ship land about 100 yards away or so, which means that SpaceX had a ship prepositioned at that landing location with a camera looking at the landing site. That's the only way they could have taken that footage, which means that not only was it a soft landing, but it was also a pinpoint landing. A bullseye landing, a bullseye landing with all of that damage. And again, we, it's going to be a little while before we know exactly uh, what blew up, but we know something blew up near those, uh, those Raptor <laughs> engines. Uh, and, and again, like we're looking at the fins. If you look very closely, like this one in particular, you see that fin is working and it's very uh, like Dory from Lil Nemo uh, looking there. Uh, are you able to continue to, <laughs> yeah. to, to, to like, steer a ship with that type of damage to uh, what's supposed to keep it stable? You know, it's really remarkable with digital flight controls, what you can do if you have multiple means of control. You have the fins. You also have thrust vectoring. So it's it, you can lose perhaps a fin or half a fin and still land safely because you can use your thrust vectoring to compensate for that. Uh, you know, we've been able to land fighter airplanes with half a wing gone because mm -hmm. the flight controller senses that something's amiss and compensates for that asymmetry. So. Uh, great kudos, not just to our thermal engineers tonight, but our flight control engineers as well. This is a remarkable feat, a huge success for SpaceX and, um, and, and rocketry overall. Really a great night. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's one thing for everything to go perfect. It's another for uh, us to see that kind of landing when things go a little haywire towards the end there. Uh, Olivia, real fast, this is flight 10. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, what do you give it? Uh, well, we don't know all the details yet, but I would say it's either a 9.5 or a 9.9 .9 or a 10, depending on what we learn about that internal damage we saw. So this is A plus for sure. Uh, Olivia DeWick from MIT, thank you so very much.
We thank you for watching. And remember, stay updated on breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or watch live on our YouTube channel.